Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for inviting me to this event. I'm really excited to share and talk about my work today. Um, I'm Wonuk Song. I'm a PhD candidate at the Software Platform Lab in Seoul National University located in South Korea. And today I'm going to talk about our project, Apache Nemo, uh, which enables flexible optimizations and efficient execution on distributed data processing. Um, Nemo is currently an Apache incubator project, mainly being developed by our research group in Seoul National University. All right, uh, let's first get a little overview before we get started. So we know how data processing works. First, there's a data processing application coded with frameworks like Apache Beam or Spark. Then there's a bunch of different data processing frameworks with different designs. Um, and there's a pool of computing resources that we, we can use to run these applications with. The thing is that such resource environments are not just uniform and identical, but there's a lot of different types of resource environments where such difference becomes problems um, in the existing data processing frameworks. For example, um, one can use cheap transient resources that are collected from the idle resources in data centers, which can be evicted at any time. Or one could run their applications on data centers where computing and storage resources are disaggregated and managed separately. Or one could try running their applications in data centers that are distant from each other, um, connected with heterogeneous network bandwidths. Or they could be facing a skewed data set um, where a specific key is overly popular and the list can go on and on. Each of the such problems have different approaches in dealing with the problems. Um, with preemptive transient resources, the recomputation costs must be reduced. Uh, with disaggregated resources, the work has to be distributed accordingly um, in the compute and storage nodes. Um, in heterogeneous bandwidths, wide area network bottlenecks should be reduced. And with skewed data sets, the load has to be balanced out. Concretely, um, the distributed runtime schedule tasks on multiple executors that run with data center resources uh, while communicating with each other. And what existing work has done to solve the different problems is that they had to implement all these um, specialized schedulers and communication channels for the different specific environments um, with the different uh, scheduling and communication strategies. The problems with the existing approaches are that it's difficult to guarantee and ensure identical results in the optimized executions. Um, this prevents the specializations from being safely applied on different um, general applications and from combining multiple optimizations under cases uh, where multiple optimizations are, uh, are simultaneously required. Um, Apache Nemo tries to solve all these problems to solve optimizations for the various um, different environments as well as um, combinations of such environments all on its own. Here's a brief overview of how uh, Nemo looks like of the Nemo architecture. Um, first, Nemo takes data processing applications, primarily Apache Beam applications, as well as Spark RDD programs, and turns them into our intermediate representation, which I'll refer as an IR from now on. So on the IR, it applies a specific set of hand-tuned optimization passes um, designed for each of the different use cases to tag each IR vertices and edges with specific properties that run efficiently in the specific use case, uh, which could be understood and executed later by the NEMO compatible runtime. Okay, uh, so let's look into this concretely. First, a NEMO job requires a Beam or Spark application, and it requires a list of compile time passes and a set of runtime passes uh, to optimize the given application for a specific environment with a specific characteristic. With the application, as I briefly mentioned, um, it's translated into an IR DAG on intermediate representation directly and isolated graph. And on that IR DAG, different passes are applied while checking for the correctness of the resulting IR DAG for each of the passes. For the following passes that are applied on top of each other, um, our sanity checker checks for conflicts and for the correctness of the optimized IR DAGs. So in the end, if all checks pass, the optimized IR DAG gets transformed into a physical runtime DAG, which gets scheduled and executed on the NEMA runtime consisting of a master and multiple executors, uh, which execute reflecting the optimizations uh, that are specified by the compile time passes. Later, when further optimizations are required dynamically during the actual execution of the job, a message can be sent to the NEMO compiler uh, so that the optimized IR DAG can be further optimized by the runtime passes specified by the message from the runtime. 
Uh, runtime passes also go under the sanity checker for correctness and conflicts. And the physical runtime DAG gets lazily updated for the correctness of the application. So basically, uh, Nemo tries to schedule the workloads and to transfer the intermediate data efficiently by optimizing the related properties of big data applications. Um, in short, it bases itself on four aspects. It is designed in the way so that such optimizations can be easily um, extended uh, to new environments with new properties, only needing to implement just the new components without having to reinvent the whole wheel. Um, next, it aims to flexibly optimize the applications in units of P transforms and P collections and not for the whole workload. Um, also, it is designed so that the different optimization can be um, composed together uh, so that one can use multiple optimizations simultaneously while ensuring correctness uh, so that the workload is actually executed in the designated way. So if you're running one or more data centers or clusters and want to use your computing resources more efficiently, or if you want to run your data processing applications faster under your specific environment or condition, um, Nemo would be a very nice candidate as your data processing framework. Let's demonstrate this, um, how this happens um, with some real examples. So how a Beam or Spark program, which many of you might already be familiar with, gets translated into a Nemo IR DAG is simple. Um, P transforms or transformations and actions on Spark are wrapped and translated into IR vertices and P collections or RDDs are translated into IR edges. Um, let's use a real code example to demonstrate this better. On the left, you can see a simple beam code performing a text read operation followed by a map elements group by key and another map elements P transforms. Um, here you can see that each of the P transforms are translated into a corresponding IR vertex, which each wraps a P transform into the R vertex abstraction, uh, which are connected by edges describing the dependency of the operations. Basically, you can think of an IR vertex as a wrapper for the P transforms so that we can perform specific optimizations uh, on the P transforms. In our example, let's observe a case that can occur on the shuffle edge, which is generated, generated with the group by key operation um, that requires collection of data from multiple machines uh, for the data containing the hash keys that the group by key task is allocated with. Okay, so the first example case that we're going to observe is uh, when handling large scale shuffle data uh, on group by key tasks. So under the shuffle dependencies, when retrieving data from multiple machines, each designated with the keys of the data to retrieve from the previous operation, um, the shuffle operation incurs random disk seek, uh, disk reads and disk seek overheads from multiple disks. Um, this happens in not only one, but each of the group by key tasks. So the overhead results in a huge bottleneck in data shuffling operation. And it's a very important problem while performing large data and big jobs. To solve this issue, uh, researchers have proposed methods for batching the disk reads to prevent the random disk reads um, to change them to more uh, sequential disk read operations. Such solution can be expressed as shown on the slide. Um, which enables us to push the data with a specific key to a specific relay vertex that lays out the data to disk sequentially um, in the way that it will be read by each of the following group by key tasks so that the data can be read sequentially on the disk instead of incurring um, those random disk, disk reads. How Nemo performs this optimization is very simple and this can be done in just a few lines of code. Our algorithm first seeks for these shuffle edges, uh, creates a new relay vertex and inserts it in between the shuffle edge, and then tags the incoming and the outgoing edges of the relay vertex with the appropriate um, execution properties that distinguish how the intermediate data should be transferred to and from the relay vertex. Once each pass is applied on the original IR DAG, our sanity checker confirms that both IR DAGs produce um, equivalent final outputs as the result of the application. Now, with the optimized IR DAG, the Nemo master distributes and schedules them to the Nemo executor so that each task carry out their work as designated earlier by the beam, uh, beam P transforms. As shown on the slides, the read and map tasks run in a pipeline manner and pushes their outputs to the following relay task, 
uh, which writes the intermediate data on disk. Then the data written on the disk can be read sequentially by the following group by key and map tasks, preventing random disk seek overheads from occurring. Our evaluations for a map reduce workload show that for Spark, uh, the reduced tasks take up the majority of the job completion time for large data sets, as you can see in the second, fourth, and the sixth graphs. Whereas Nemo successfully keeps the ratio small, although it results in a slight increase in the proportion of the map tasks um, in the job completion time due to the relaying out operations, as you can see on the first, third, and fifth graph on the slide. Another evaluation uh, shows the same results where Nemo keeps high disk speed throughout the entire workload, um, resulting in short job completion time, whereas Spark resulting in a very small disk throughput while performing long reduced tasks, taking up most, most of the job completion times. Now, a second example that I wanted to demonstrate, uh, Nemo was with, uh, with utilizing cheap transient resources in cases when you're short of budget. So what transient resources are, they're simply resources that are left over and left idle in data centers as latency critical jobs usually over provision resources for peak traffics. Um, obviously such resources are cheaper, but they have to give up uh, the resources once the original jobs ask to return their resources meaning that it incurs container evictions. So what happens while running tasks on such resources is that container evictions can result in abrupt, frequent, and indeterministic um, task terminations, uh, which also results in loss of intermediate data. So researchers have distinguished the tasks of the workload into ones that depend on a large number of parent tasks as valuable tasks, and the ones with less dependency as less valuable tasks. So if you look at a simple map reduce application, the map tasks have to uh, have no parent tasks, so it's considered as less valuable, and we place them on transient containers, and each of the reduced tasks are dependent on multiple map tasks, so they're considered as more valuable, and we place them on reserve containers. So to compare the cases, um, the general engines place tasks without distinguishing the different containers, while our optimization places tasks according to their valuability. Now, if an eviction occurs in transient containers while performing the data shuffle, um, the data is lost on the general engines, while our optimization safely keeps the data on reserved containers. Consequently, it results in cascading recomputations of multiple tasks in the general engines, whereas it doesn't invoke recomputations in our case uh, when the optimization is, is applied. Uh, this optimization can also be implemented with just a few lines of simple code as well. Um, it looks at each vertex topologically and tags them accordingly with transient and reserved containers. Uh, the ones with the less valuable dependency are tagged with transient, and the ones with more valuable dependency or those that are pipelined with such vertices are tagged uh, with reserved containers. Uh, by the way, uh, pipelining means um, that each of the operations are connected with a one-to-one -one dependency, uh, meaning that it can be run in a single single task. Um, so after the pass is applied again, they go under the sanity checkers to confirm that they produce equivalent final outputs. Um, now, comparing Spark with Nemo and Pado, which is the work that originally suggested the idea, um, Spark suffers from all rates of evictions on transient resources, whereas Nemo and Pado remains rather indifferent and stable according to the different eviction rates. Now, if for example, one wants to apply the transient container optimization on top of the large shuffle optimization that we have seen earlier, because we can be facing large shuffle operations in when whenever we are using um, transient resources. So what one has to do is that one simply needs to execute the two passes, one after another, which each runs on its specified rules. And what our system does is that, um, again, it checks for both passes uh, applied without that, that the both passes are applied without conflicting each other and produces the optimized DAG. And we can see that from the, the evaluation results uh, that for a large scale map reduced workload on transient and reserve resources show that combining the two passes 
uh, produce the shortest job completion time, whereas not using or just using just one of the passes is not capable of solving the both both of the two problems that coexist in our setting. Um, any beam application can be optimized in our system in such ways in a very simple and intuitive ways. In order to show this in action, I'll first demonstrate running a simple beam application on my local machine. And I've also prepared a short video um, showing several demos for running different types of beam applications on Nemo uh, with a lot of fast forwarding enabled as a typical large scale uh, workload takes hours to complete. So um, we can you can retrieve our code on the Apache Incubator Nemo repository. Um, we have a few releases, uh, but uh, if you want to build the code from scratch, you can um, get your code on your local machine. Uh, and I've prepared a um, install Nemo script here. Uh, so what you can do is that uh, on a Linux or on on Mac, you can run the script, and this script will uh, be taking care of all of the prerequisites and it will be um, compiling Nemo code for you um, on Maven. I've already built the machine for myself and I'm going to show um, running a Beam application. So what we can do is that with this, we also have this run Beam script and we can specify things like job, the job ID or the optimization policy, um, specifying the policy that we want to use for the optimization. And we can specify the user main function, which is our Beam application. And we can use um, other arguments, such as um, using the runner as um, our Nemo runner and, and specifying things like the input file or the output file. So what we can do is that um, we can see that uh, Nemo is running on my local machine. And this is not going to take long because this is a very short program. And yep, there we go. And I'll show the output of this file, which is saved here. And this is just a simple word count um, application. So we have uh, names of the different contributors of our project. And, and yeah, you can run Beam applications like this. So going back, I'll now show a uh, short videos showing uh, some more, uh, several demos for running different types of beam applications on Nemo. Um, so here we go. Our first demo runs the batch processing application. Um, it performs an analysis on a network trace log. Um, the right side is what you will see if you run Ren Nemo on your machine. Um, I've just shown this earlier. Um, now on the left, we can see our visualizer uh, where we can, we can see the progress of uh, the execution. Um, this supports WebSockets, so you can see things happening in real time. Um, you can see the status of the job as well as each of the tasks. Uh, the second demo shows a machine learning workload, a multinomial logistic regression running on Nemo. And here we can also see the visualizer on the left and on the right, we can see the loss for each of the iteration on the output section. Um, we can see that the numbers are coming up now and we can connect to the web circuit as well. And here uh, we can also see the progress going up in a second. Uh -huh, there we go. And we can see also that the DAG for this application is much longer compared to the previous one because this one is an iterative workload. Now third is a stream processing workload. Uh, this is the sixth query of the Nextmark, Nextmark benchmark. Um, you can see the execution in action with the inputs and the output queries being created and processed on the right. Um, and this time uh, on the visualizer, we can also see we can also connect to the WebSocket and we can see uh, the status and the DAG visualization as well. Here we can see that the tasks do not turn green because um, stream workloads are expected to run continuously. Lastly, we'll compare the performance of a large scale application on Nemo and on Spark. So here's the IR DAG optimized with our large triple optimization pass. And we've launched 
uh, both of the jobs at the same time uh, to run the three terabytes, three TPCH benchmark per number 12. Uh, for the time being, let's fast forward it by 145 times. Um, we can see the progress bar uh, for Nemo quickly going up while Spark has its progress bar going up relatively slowly. Uh, the job completion time for Nemo had been 36 minutes, whereas it took Spark over two and a half hours to finish. That was it for the demo. Um, so Nemo is open source and you can find more information on our website and on our GitHub. We have um, good integration with uh, other Apache projects, including Apache Beam, which has Apache Nemo as one of its official runner for running Beam programs, um, as well as Apache Spark and resource managers like Hadoop Yarn and Hadoop Mesos, uh, thanks to Apache Reef. Uh, further details of the work can be shown on our paper presented as a conference paper at the ATC 2019 conference, as well as a journal paper, which will be shortly available at the ACM Transactions on Computer Systems um, journal in a few days. Before I finish, um, I would like to quickly mention a few ongoing works on top of Nemo. Uh, first is to apply machine learning for the optimizations. Uh, to solve the resource constraints problem that I've described earlier regarding the different resource environments, we propose providing uh, the specifications of the resources that are available for certain workloads and to use machine learning to place the different operator vertices to specific resources that can execute the work more most efficiently. Uh, we store the metric data along with the information of our R DAG into the database and use that information to generate and form decision trees like this using um, tree boosting or other tree generation techniques. And as you can see, these decision trees lead to different job completion time outcomes and such results can be reflected on an IR DAG to produce smaller job completion times. And this is an ongoing work and it is early stages of our research. Also, we propose a method for using serverless frameworks for scaling out bursty streaming workloads. Uh, so this is the situation. Uh, when workloads suddenly require more resources due to input, input rate fluctuations or windowed operations, uh, Nemo tries to invoke serverless executors instead of virtual machines through existing serverless frameworks. Um, as serverless frameworks provide faster resource provisioning and boot up time compared to virtual machines and can be invoked on demand. And with the serverless containers, we can migrate and offload the burden of the operations causing uh, the bursts to the serverless containers to scale out uh, without damaging the latency. This is also a work in its early stages. Right, so our project was started in 2017 and I believe that it has a lot of potentials. It has been an incubator project since the spring of 2018 now with 70 contributors, over 300 pull requests and over 600 commits. Uh, we are working very hard to grow the community. So if you find our work useful, so uh, please go ahead and try out our system for your use case. We are also participating in the Google Summer of Code pro program for four consecutive years to attract open source contributors. Um, we have successfully mentored seven projects now. Um, one of them had been the web user interface that was shown on the demo, and we're doing a lot more interesting optimizations on our system. All right, to wrap up, uh, the Nemo Runner is already available in, and the instructions can be found on the Beam website. Um, you might need to run Beam applications through the run script provided by Nemo uh, to fully utilize the, all of the options that Nemo provides, as I've shown um, in the demo. Uh, I hope you found this presentation useful and that you could use it to run your own applications with the optimizations that we provide. And again, we are looking for new contributors to be able to enrich the possibilities of data processing with our system. So that's the end of the talk for today. And for those who think our work is interesting, you can refer to the links shown on the slide. Um, thank you very much for listening and I'll be happy to take your questions.